Adam, being the father of all humanity, here in the garden, God gave him the authority to define and to name creation. He said, Adam, I'm going to bring the creatures that I've created to you, and I want you to name them. And and that's going to be their name on this earth. And we must remember that God himself, according to um, the word in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when God breathed into Adam, he essentially was breathing his word into Adam. God breathes into his spirit, the very person he was, into Adam. And that spirit, that person, was the word of God itself coming from heaven to earth. In fact, that's the whole reason why God created earth to begin with. And in a curriculum that I wrote, Kingdom of Heaven, I talk about the earth being heaven's colony and an attached area that is to look like the kingdom of heaven. And that, that's a desire, right? That's God, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's the whole desire that God had in his heart when he created the Garden of Eden. So up until sin entered into Adam, everything he spoke was the kingdom of God coming to earth. Everything he spoke was the word of God coming to earth. So every time he would speak and name creation, it was according to the word of God. It was according to God's kingdom that Adam was given authority to do. Adam had the authority to bring your kingdom come to earth. As the father of humanity, that was Adam's prophetic and spiritual role, was to bring your kingdom come to earth. But we realize that in the end of that scripture we just read, verse 21, uh, no, at the end of verse 20, it says, but for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. That word helper means helpmate, meaning that Adam was missing a significant part of himself to accomplish God's will on this earth. He He was void of something that was significantly important for God, that God needed to accomplish his kingdom on the earth. He he needed the womb, so to speak. So um, in verse 21, we read, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So shall you be called woman because she was taken out of man. That word woman is a very interesting word because it comes from two root words, womb and man. Woman is the womb of man. You see, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, 11 through 12 says, Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman came from man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things from God. In other words, what God was saying was that woman prophetically speaking, spiritually speaking, and literally speaking, was the womb of man. So in that garden, when God said, Adam, I have given you the authority, the spiritual and God-given authority for you, for you to bring my word from heaven to earth, my kingdom come to earth, but my seed is isn't going to grow in you. I need a womb. I need an environment for that seed to be nurtured in in order to produce and manifest on this earth. The woman's mother's prophetic role as Eve was the mother of all humanity is to be the spiritual and prophetic womb for her family, to create an environment that nurtures the womb the word of God, until it's manifest on this earth. Adam was the word, 
Eve was the womb. 